This is a way of withdrawing money that is included in the criminal code, only to see that the bub took out 100 yuan after. He didn't leave in a hurry, but took out the glue. He put glue on the exit door. Then he turned around and walked away. Soon a man came to withdraw the money. The AEM kept reminding the man to take the money away. But no money came out. The man was so angry, he thought the machine was broken. He thought the machine was broken, so he switched to another one. After that, more and more people came to withdraw money. Without exception, all of them couldn't get any money out. Bob thought it was about time, so he took his bank card. He went back to the ATM again. With one card, he withdrew money from three people. Afterwards, the crooks counted the spoils of the day. With this startup money, they could do big things. According to the agreement, Mike gave the money to the tycoon with interest. The tycoon was dumbfounded that he could get such a return on his investment. For just one day's investment, it's really his turn to get this kind of return on his investment. Mike pretended that he had a meeting to attend and had to leave. Tao, his accomplice, intentionally said he wanted to invest more money. But the tycoon said that he had already made so much money, there was no need to continue. This operation really makes the people a little miscalculation. Seeing that the tycoon is about to leave, suddenly there was a knock on the door and it came from Jack. Mike was a bit confused because there was no such person in the plan. Jack came straight to Mike and his words revealed his admiration for Mike. But when I gave you that money, I did for one second consider the possibility that you could have been, well, you know, well, I can't even say it. No, no, go ahead, please. Get it off your chest. I thought you could have been one of those con men. <laughs> I'm not going to see me money or him ever again, you know what I mean? Yeah, then bang! Suddenly, 400% return, just like that. Straight off. Jack also said that he wanted to make another big fortune, and his excellent acting skills also made the rich man's heart beat fast. Mike asked Lucy to see off the guest first. If there is another deal up for grabs, well, I'd... I'd like to hear about it. After that tycoon left, Mike punched Jack. So I'm in. You're in. And so began an amazing scam, a scam that only the rich would fall for. First, Mike handed the rich man the money he invested with interest. He gained the trust of the tycoon. Then he went to an office building and found a company with no one there recently. Jack pretended to consult and attracted the attention of the money desk. Lucy took the opportunity to look up the computer and check the vacant office. Then he went to the switch room to install a camera and chatted with the staff. When they found an office and confirmed that no one was there, Mike immediately took out a professional lock picking tool. He opened the door in less than five seconds and then quickly set up the interior of the office. Not a single detail was spared. Soon, Tom came to the office building with the tycoon. Mike also began a professional brainwashing mode. He said that his company's stock trading had never missed a beat. He also showed the tycoon the backstage operations screen. But he didn't know that this picture was taken just a few minutes ago. Jack began to pretend that he was worried about the return. Mike assured him that the return would never be less. He said that only when his clients make money, he will be able to make a profit, and that there are only three spots left. Upon hearing this, the tycoon asked how much he needed to invest. Mike said this time, at least a million pounds to start. Jack agreed without hesitation. Tom said he would try his best to get the money together. Seeing that the tycoon is still hesitant, Mike said that regardless of whether or not all the people are together, the stock exchange will take place in three days. Seeing that both of them agreed, the tycoon finally decided to join in. But after everything was ready, Jack was accidentally caught by the police. The police found out that Jack had only recently joined the game. So they wanted to use him as a link to break up the scammers. And promised Jack that he would be acquitted after accomplishing the crime. After all, these guys are going to jail for sure. When they saw Jack's delay, they couldn't wait any longer. Thinking that this is the last moment to close the net, they can't afford to make any mistakes. At that moment, Lucy got the call. The tycoon was already downstairs. Lucy hurriedly puts a pack of fake banknotes at the door, just waiting for the tycoon to arrive. The fraudsters have just set their sights on a tycoon, but they don't realize that their teammate Jack has been arrested by the police. They have been coercing Jack, but they can't wait any longer. The rich man has already arrived. Tom was the first to open the case to show his sincerity. Then he handed the case to Lucy, but the tycoon was a bit hesitant, because he hadn't seen Jack's figure yet. The experienced man was worried, but at that moment, there was a sudden knock on the door. No need to guess that the person coming must be Jack. Lucy secretly handed Jack the box of banknotes placed at the door. When he wanted to say something, Mike immediately stopped him and reminded him that the deal had already started. Seeing Jack walk in with a money box, the rich man's heart was hanging in the air. But just as Mike was about to take the rich man's suitcase, the door of the room was suddenly knocked open. The police officers hurriedly explained to the tycoon, these people are all crooks. They are working together to cheat him. All right, Danny. Go. Mike looked at Jack with a confused look on his face. 
Just as the police officers was about to pick up the suitcase, Mike grabbed his gun and pointed it at Jack. Then he pulled the trigger, but he missed because he was nervous. Just as he was about to fire again, the sheriff pulled the trigger. Mike was shot in the head. Blood splattered everywhere. Jack was furious. The sheriff had just promised him. He was knocked out by the sheriff and woke up to find the sheriff right in front of him. He told Jack that the others had been taken away. He wants Jack to sign the papers so that he can bring these crooks to justice. But no matter what the sheriff said, Jack didn't sign. Go screw yourself. Okay. He's all yours. Jack was completely confused when he saw the people coming from the doorway. Aren't these people in custody? The crowd laughed at his expression. So this is Jack's final test. At that moment, Mike also came out from the door. And the rich man's money is still with him. What the police officers brought back was just a pile of waste paper. It turns out that the sheriff is one of them. He's just a fake name, replacing the sheriff who just reported to the police. Because the sheriff had been seduced by Lucy's beauty. So when they were taken away, they were quickly released by Sheriff Gia. And the headbanging was also prepared in advance. They just put a miniature bomb in the watermelon. So everything worked together seamlessly. The police station found out that if this incident was publicized, it's too embarrassing. They could only burn the evidence and forget about it. And the fraudsters are going to have a very bad time.